This penalty incident, it was given by Jesus Gil Manzano, the Spanish official. Get both your takes here. I want to start with you first, Shaka, because we're told it has to be a clear and obvious error for it to be overturned. Look, it's a soft penalty. I get that. But is it a clear and obvious error? Because there is some sort of contact. What do you reckon, Shaka? Uh, I, I am totally comfortable with the overturning of the penalty okay. and, and the manner in, in, in which it, it, it happened. To, to your point, yes, sir, there may have been some contact and it would have gone down as a soft penalty. But just given the way that uh, Jesus Hill was refereeing the game all along, um, uh, East Milan had a couple of a, a, a couple of calls that they thought uh, warrant, warranted a, a penalty themselves. That, that Jesus Hill uh, Manzano didn't didn't even didn't bother to give, or, and certainly wasn't was referred to to the monitor by by the VAR. That was in totally keeping with with the penalty that mm -hmm. was given on Lautaro Martinez, and then and then overturned. So while while yes, you can make the argument that there was contact and. Um, I, I am never a fan of, of this clear and obvious kind of um, uh, directive, I, I guess, shall we call it. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I find that pretty empty, in, in all honesty. Um, just given the way that the, the whole game was going, it was consistent. So and, and as a player, pre-VAR, post-VAR, all you ask is consistency and overturning that call for me. Um, was, was just that. It's just it's the inconsistency of, of different games, Gab, because sometimes that's not going to be looked at by, well, it's going to be looked at by VAR, but it's not going to be suggested that the referee comes over. Other times, like today, then this happens. Okay. Ultimately, what we want, was the right decision adhered to? Did we end up with the correct call of no penalty? Or should it just have been left alone with the referee on the field? Because we do not re-referee games with VAR, and that's crucial. Well, all right, so a couple of things. First of all, I think any normal person will say that that is a penalty. That is not a penalty uh, every every day of the week, and certainly not in the context of, as Shaka mentioned, of, of how he was officiating the game. So the most important thing is he got to the right decision. Secondly, and here I blame, I'm so tempted to name names, but, <laughs> but I won't because he's a nice guy. There's a slew of ex-referees who make a living going on television talking about these decisions. And especially here in England, they're obsessed with this clear and obvious uh, benchmark. That is not the only parameter to decide whether the referee can go and have an on-field review. The other parameter, very simply, and it's very clearly in the rules, is the referee can say, hey, I'd love to take another look at that because this is a big call. And you know what? This whole thing with re-refereeing games, it's not the VAR who makes a decision. It's the referee. Correct. And I don't have a problem with the referee thinking, okay, I'm not 100%. I want to get this decision right, which is the single most important thing. I am going to decide to look at this again. So we don't know what the dialogue was between Jim Manzano and the fourth official, um, but UEFA do, and they'll look at this. And it's entirely possible that, you know, the VAR – speculating I, I believe it or not i did not hack into their comms but it's entirely possible <laughs> that you know the fourth official said sorry, the var said hey what'd you get the penalty for and he said their legs got tangled and then he says no they didn't there was a push but we're not sure about that and he says wait let me see it again i want to get this right because when you see it in real time um you know, it does look as if possibly their legs get tangled. I mean, the way he goes down is consistent with that. Obviously, we know the contact was on the push. So I, just repeating endlessly, clear and obvious, clear and obvious. What the heck does it matter? It matters that he got the right decision, right? Uh, this is a clear, I, I, I think it was an error. If he was looking at the wrong thing and he gave it for something else, uh, then by all means, he should look at it. I, I think clear and obvious applies. Remember back in the olden days in England when they first introduced it and they said, the oh, let's not days. have on-field reviews. Let's just have the VAR overrules thing. Well, there it's necessary to have clear and obvious because I don't want the VAR who might be some Burke who doesn't know how to use a monitor <laughs> like some of the early VAR referees we've had in the Premier League. I don't want him re refereeing the game. But in these situations, I think it's completely different. So um, I have no problem. I, I think generally, I think him and Sano refereed the game very, very well. A um, couple of calls later, maybe you can debate a little bit, but this is how we want it. We don't want the guy blowing up for a foul every every five minutes. We want honest play. We, we don't want indiscipline. 
and I thought the officiating was good. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.